So my first question is for Zoe. So How It Ends takes place during an apocalypse when the world is ending, and it was filmed during quarantine, which in a lot of ways felt like the world as we knew it was also ending. So can you talk about the inspiration behind the film and where you got the idea of addressing one's younger self when the world ends? Well, we were, as you mentioned, inspired by the real life apocalypse (laughs) that we were facing. Um, And yeah, Daryl and I started to conceive of the film a couple months into quarantine. Uh, I think because we were, we didn't honestly know what else to do with uh, the overwhelm of emotions that we were like juggling and trying to navigate and um, trying to speak to like our most vulnerable selves and in therapy talk sort of our, our inner children. Um, and so this, this conceit of um, me, my character on a journey uh, with her inner child in conversation with her inner child on the last day on earth was born. And, um, and I think, yeah, it was a very cathartic process for both Daryl and I. And, and honestly, um, I think for our cast as well, because for many of them, it was their first time on camera um, since lockdown. And, uh, and for some of them, some of them, it was their first time like interacting with another human IRL. <laughs> so um, <laughs> Yeah, it was a wild ride. Yeah, I imagine. Definitely that first interaction like post lockdown was crazy. So I can't imagine having that being in a film. So yeah. super fun. And then um, for Daryl, I'm curious what the logistics of filming were like and making a film during quarantine. Uh, How It Ends was one of the first few films to be made and fully completed during the pandemic. And I'm just curious how you use maybe camera angles or any other sort of hacks or sort of cheats to make it look like actors were closer together than they were or just any sort of like logistical things you had to adjust for because of the pandemic. It was so easy shooting during the pandemic. It was just <laughs> all GoPro. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, it was a very small crew. So it was just me, a friend who I shot a film with before. We were both on camera and um, a sound mixer. And then we had an assistant. And that was, you know, obviously due to resources and pandemic and shooting outside and during these uh, difficult circumstances, but also in a way designed that way. Cause um, we could, we could accomplish a lot more being that tiny. So our footprint was small. We didn't have huge setups. And uh, I think from a cinematic perspective, um, I was hoping to, capture these kind of wide tableaus to mirror this kind of stillness that we were feeling. So that was kind of why I wanted to shoot in a kind of static way um, because everything felt kind of mundane and still and the streets were relatively empty. We spent a lot of time waiting for cars and people to pass by. Um, But yeah, I was trying to capture a slightly whimsical, um, kind of apocalyptic emptiness. Totally. I think mission accomplished. It was yeah. it definitely had that sort of like tone and energy and all of that. Um, so, and it was just so fun to watch um, as well. Thank you. And then, yeah, of course. And then my next question is for Zoe. So in the film, your younger self is played by Kaylee Spaney, who you have worked with before on the craft. And I'm wondering what it was like to work together again with her on this film. It was a dream. She's she's a dreamy person and actor to work with, both as a director and, and as a, a co-star. Um, she's, yeah, she's just a really exciting new talent <laughs> on the scene. Um, and I think when she auditioned for the craft, I was just so um, drawn to like how both grounded and nuanced and um, natural she was and and also how little um, she had to do to accomplish so much emotionally as a performer. Um, And we became really close on on the craft and, and we started shooting how it ends just a few months really after we had wrapped the craft. So we were still very much in this, um, yeah, like deep creative collaboration uh, and had also formed this amazing friendship. And, um, 
and it, yeah, it was exciting to see her do something a little different. I mean, it was very different from the craft. So to see her spread her wings as a comedian was was really cool. Yeah, I feel like the whole cast really was so strong and so talented. And so then I'm curious for Daryl, what it was like to work with such a great cast. I know that you've worked with and collaborated with many of the actors in the film before. And so I'm curious what it was like to sort of reunite with all of them to film how it ends. It was awful. There it is. <laughs> Eva's, Eva's. Uh, a lot of yet yeah, ever we had to have trailers for everybody um no they're all the best they were so down and I think excited to work and come out of the house <laughs> some some cases just step outside their own uh yeah it was it was such a beautiful thing really to just to like connect with anyone during that time especially like those people who are just like miraculous human beings and so talented and interesting and so it was just heaven to to get to be in their presence and and play and feel a sense of excitement and creativity when there was we were stripped of all of that connection and and um fluidity definitely yeah i imagine just great to sort of reunite in such a creative space um yeah. And then for Zoe, I'm curious. So I heard that in How It Ends, all of the actors were responsible for their own hair, makeup, wardrobe, all of that. And so I'm curious if you could talk a little bit about what that experience was like for you. Well, <laughs> you know, I mean, I, it was it was totally fine. I, I think it's it's we had a very intimate um, experience just in general. Like our crew was very small. We were very nimble on our feet. I think, as Daryl mentioned, some of our actors literally just stepped outside their front door to meet us and shoot. Um, and I think, yeah, like hair and makeup can sometimes be a, a cool thing that gets you into a character. But I think because the, the things that we were act, asking of our actors was to sort of show up as themselves in many ways, like wherever they were on any given day emotionally, we really wanted to incorporate that into their characters because we were creating an emotional landscape that was paralleling the one that we were living in. So, um, so I feel like, yeah, being able to just do our own hair and makeup was, uh, was part and parcel with the process, but um, you know, I love a professional. I, I do love a professional. <laughs> of course. Yeah. And then for Daryl, I'm curious if you have a favorite memory from filming how it ends, you know, Standing and watching and filming Sharon Van Etten singing to Zoe and Kaylee was really surreal. You know, she's an incredible musician. And so like having a private concert, yeah. it, it was just incredible, really moving and emotional. And she created that song, I think like the same day, um, like Zoe can speak more to that, but um yeah, it was just like such a beautiful moment. Yeah, I would agree. I mean, she's like my favorite recording artist ever. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, so it was wild. It was wild to watch her perform, for her to create something original for the film and then to be able to sing with her. It was, I was definitely, um, yeah, weeping. Just, just weeping from start to finish. <laughs> yeah, that's such a powerful part, uh, sort of like an emotional moment in that film. And I think it's so great that it was that way in real life for you both as well. Um, and then for Zoe, I'm curious for you what it was like uh, to bring your character Liza to life. Maybe if you had a favorite part of sort of bringing her onto the screen. I don't know that, like, I, I can't distill my process in, in I can't reveal my secrets. Uh, no, I, it, there wasn't like a, I don't, I don't, remember there being a process of bringing Liza to screen, I think because Liza was very much an extension of Zoe. <laughs> so um, I think I just wanted to, uh, I think the beauty of shooting this film when we did was that um, I and, and all of us were so raw, you know, and I think to create art out of that place when, when um, yeah, the, the guard, the guards that generally are up, even when we're trying to reveal um, our most honest selves, were so um, transparent, I think, in a way that we had never experienced before. So I guess that was an, an interesting and, and sort of 
exciting and scary part of bringing her to life. Definitely. Yeah. And then I just have one final question for both of you. And it's just, um, what do you hope audiences get out of seeing how it ends? I think we would love for them to feel a sense of catharsis in, um, in watching it in that they can kind of look inward and, you know, think about maybe their inner child and what, you know, are they hoping to, uh, accomplish or dreams that have been unfulfilled that they still want to um, fulfill. And, you know, we want them to laugh, obviously. So hopefully it'll be like a nice um, release after, you know, what everyone is coming out of. Um, and yeah, just go on a fun ride um, that can reflect a little bit about, you know, the inner kind of emotional state um, that we're, that they're experiencing and how to, you know, treat themselves with more kindness, hopefully. Um, Cause we're all so hard on ourselves. Uh, we all have that voice telling us, you know, we're not good enough. We're, we're uh, we live in such, I think so many people live in such fear. Um, and so hopefully the film allows them to step outside that in, in a small way. That's a great answer, totally. Yeah. I, think, I think the film does accomplish that. I absolutely loved watching it and I can't wait for everyone else to get the chance to see it. And I wanna thank you both so much for taking the time to speak with me today. I really appreciated it. And a huge congratulations once again on the film. Thank, thank you so much. So nice so talking to you.